Well, you know, I think particularly within this world, a world of an action film, it's very important that the movie be sound and solid, that the foundation of it um, feel like there was, there's enough for you to hang a character's, you know, your character's hat on. And this was just, it worked from the second that I read it. Not only do I, have I wanted to work with Michael Bay for a long time actually, and his movies really excite me, and they just feel like fun. I was, he wrote me, sent me the script, and he said, read it, I think it's good, but I mean, you know, we'll play around with it, you know? And I was like, this, this works, this works. And it, and it really moved me. And I, uh, I was so down for some fun. So um, all, those, all those pieces, um, I think Michael may have said to me, yeah, I was almost not gonna do it, then you said you wanted to do it, so I guess we're gonna do it, you know? So I was like, oh, cool. Um, but I think that uh, all of those elements. Um, Danny Sharp is a complex uh, human being in that I think his intentions are um, that he grew up in a family where, you know, bank robberies and heists were sort of uh, normal, which is, sounds crazy, but it was true. And um, grew up with his brother, Will, um, who is an adopted brother. Uh, and really they were, you know, like so, so, so close. And I think growing up in a family, there was so much chaos probably and, and, and discomfort. I think they found a lot of comfort with each other. And so um, in the years that have preceded Will leaving and then both growing up, they've, they've separated in a lot of ways and don't stay in touch. And I think Danny is probably desperate for a connection and the love of his brother and the support of that. And so I think he's a character that is conflicted, you know, um, is used to doing one thing. That one thing happens to be bank robberies and robberies. Um, but I think his intention is to try and connect and he loves his brother very much. So he's a, he's a complicated character, one that I think is loving, but a little bit misunderstanding about, misunderstood and misunderstanding about what that love is and how to, how to put that into action, you know? Don't rob banks. Um, I just like how like sort of mad he is, you know. I mean, there, you know, I, I, I like the idea of putting three different characters with different intentions in one very small space, going hundreds of miles an hour, um, adds a particular kind of um, I don't know. Uh, there's a something really fun about that. Um, I. I think he's a whole lot of fun. I think he's unpredictable, um, which I always love in characters, and I always think leaves so much room, because not only is he unpredictable in what he's gonna do in the big story sense, he's also unpredictable moment to moment in scenes, so you can make a lot of different choices. Um, I love the idea of an audience feeling like they know a character and then realizing that they, they were wrong. So I, I, I love playing within that world. And that's what Danny, Danny is. Yeah, I mean, you know, Will comes to Danny because he needs help. Um, he's struggling and, you know, his wife is sick and his, he just needs to take care of his family and he's been pushed to the edge. And um, Danny is his only choice, you know, his only hope. And uh, Danny wants to help. He loves his brother. And, um, and so the choice to go after this money is you know, with the intention of making sure that a system that was not allowing for his brother to, you know, help his family at all, just like tied his hands and everything behind his back um, to kind of break that system. And, um, and so the intentions between the two of them is to go rob this bank because he wants to help his brother. Um, he also has other intentions, but, uh, <laughs> but I think ultimately that's what drives the whole film. And in the end, you know, they get into a whole lot of trouble. Um, and it becomes a moral tale, really, about what you do when your intentions are good, but everything goes wrong. Well, I mean, Yaya is lovable, you know? I mean, he just is as a person, and uh, he's, a, he's an actor who is curious and is always asking questions in the same way that I do. So there was a simpatico in terms of how we always approach things. We're kind of always looking for a deeper we want something deeper, we're asking a different question. And that was fun because I think it's possible in a movie like this to not ask those questions and to just go through. But I think both of us knew 
that the more we asked those questions and dug deep together, the more interesting the movie would be. And you know, for an actor um, like him, at you know, the space he is in his career, you know, to have those intentions and to fight for them, I'm I just adore that. And he's just got such a wonderful energy. It's positive and loving, and um, that's like, frankly. Nowadays, that's what matters. <laughs> so um, I, I adored working with them. Well, they're desperate, in a desperate moment, um, looking for a way out. Uh, got themselves in a whole load of shiz, and, uh, and they uh, somehow have a run-in with an ambulance, um, and their only way out is getting in that ambulance. Um, and so they hop on, and there you meet Asa Gonzalez's character, and um, now they're stuck with this, you know, first responder with her intentions and their intentions, and that's really when the movie just like turbocharges, and um, it becomes a whole different story. I mean, a story I think about um, just it's just one it's wonderful because you're watching three different people with three different reasons to get where they're going all opposing each other yeah i mean i think i think when you meet cam there's a wonderful scene at the beginning of the movie that ace is fantastic and there's a little girl and who's wonderful in it too um and you realize that she's someone who is also struggling with um having an emotional connection with all these very hard things she has to do as a first responder um, and I think she, over time, the course of the movie, starts to realize that human beings are pretty profoundly complex and full of nuance. And as a first responder in emergencies, I think there's a lot of nuance in the job and the technicalities, but there's one goal, and it's very straightforward, and that is save the person. Um, and over time, I think you start to see that she starts to make a relationship with both of these brothers. And over the, her making a relationship with them, she sort of becomes the ballast by which the whole movie can rest itself on. And you start to see through her eyes that, you know, good or bad, you know, you can care about everyone. And I love, um, I really love the ending of the film. Um, and I really think it's so different for a Michael Bay movie and I think Ace is incredible. The injured cop in that space was injured because of a mistake that he made in wanting to get away. So there's all these moral questions that happen, you know, that I think were, that are underneath all of it, really, really interesting. It, in the end, is someone's fault, but it is sort of everyone's fault in a way too, and no one's fault, and that's what makes the movie so interesting. No, and I, and I, and I think, um, as he gets pushed and as people want to hurt him and his brother and Cam and, you know, he starts to feel for them and then has to defend them and that's when things become very complicated, you know, in the decision. I mean, yeah, I mean, what I think what I love about Danny as a character is that he says throughout the entire thing, don't hurt anyone. Like, uh, he constantly says, you know, don't do this, don't do that. Now. It would seem, you know, confusing because why would you rob a bank with weapons if you weren't going to do that? But I think the intention is always clear why he wanted to do it. But he's always saying, I don't want to just, I don't want to hurt anybody. I don't want to hurt anybody, you know? But it's very complicated. Um, I didn't know that Asa was in the, the, uh, uh, the <laughs> Spirit Untamed until we were like three quarters of the way through shooting this movie. Um, it was... Uh, <laughs> and, and and I don't even know if she she may have told me maybe but then I didn't realize what a beautiful singing voice she has uh, until then, um, and you know I think uh, yeah so we didn't really have a we didn't really have a whole we didn't really we play I think we played um, a married animated couple that never met because her character unfortunately dies at the beginning of the movie and uh, my character then uh, it's you know. It's complicated, but uh, so we never had any scenes together um, until until we were in a Michael Bay movie where we were basically like on top of each other and each other's faces all the time, um, and uh, <laughs> at a hundred miles an hour. So 
uh, it was, it, we had a good time. We had a good time. They were like, uh, we had a good time getting thrown around uh, in a, a vehicle with sharp edges. I, th I, you know, I think shooting a film in the confines of, of an ambulance uh, is nothing in comparison to uh, a first responder EMT doing their job on a daily, nightly basis, moment by moment, um, at faster speeds. I mean, it is a, you know, there are sharp edges everywhere. There are wires hanging everywhere. I mean, obviously, there's many things at your disposal to use to help save somebody's life. But, um, you know, if, I mean, I found, I found it to be so interesting when I tried to think about the reality of someone doing a job like that in a space like that. It's awe-inspiring. I mean, I think Michael is, um, is someone like many of the great directors I've worked with who uh, is searching for what feels alive, you know, what feels present and alive. And he has a different technique from other directors I've worked with. He's shooting with extraordinary operators on you know a minimum of three cameras in almost every setup, and gives himself the agility to capture moments and and improv and change and move around. And I think that energy is infectious in his movies. That's what makes them so alive. But you can start a scene with Michael thinking that it's about one thing. And if there's an actor in the scene, maybe the act scene is about their character, but the other actor's bringing a different kind of energy that he's drawn to, the scene will become about the actor who is bringing the energy that's alive. And I think that is the same with any filmmaker that of, of great stature um, that I've worked with. Like, they're looking for moments that feel truly alive. Um, Michael generates them and also is just desperate for them. I, I adored acting for Michael. There was no space that was off limits um, in the emotional world. And, um, you know, and he's very upfront and he's very direct and he's very clear. And I, I think as an actor, you start to appreciate that. Sometimes you just want slower, faster, right, left, and you get what they're trying to say. Simplicity of a comment can, can open up worlds, and Michael's like that. And most of the great directors I've worked with are like that too. Yeah, I, I was really moved by the movie. I, I was surprisingly moved by the movie. I think it's um, I think it's what I felt when I first read the script. I thought this has a potential to have those feelings in it, and they are in the movie. And I love who becomes the hero in the end, the rightful hero in the end. And um, I was really moved. Yeah, I think that there, you know, I think. I think that there is a conversation in the film that's so important and so interesting, which is that um, you know these these two these two people, these two brothers, who from the outside in a certain narrative would look like they're the bad guys, their intentions and why they do this and what they're doing it for um, is about communicating to a system that they have been just overwhelmed by, where they are powerless in. And I think that's why Danny says in the end, we are not the bad guys. Because I think he feels like, um, look at what these systems did to his brother when he's, you know, and, and it's not the right way of responding, but uh, I understand his argument somewhere. Oh man, I, I, you know, I was filming a movie in Los Angeles in October of 2020 when Michael sent me the screenplay for this. And he said, I wanna shoot this movie, I wanna shoot it really quick. Uh, and we're gonna make it for less. I've never made a movie for this little money. Uh, and this, this, like, this many days, it's crazy, but I'm gonna do it. Um, and what I loved was it's a film that pushed everyone, but particularly pushed Michael Bay in a space where um, he really had to prove himself um, in a different way, which was he had limited time, he had a limited budget for him. Um, for me, it wasn't limited, um, one of a, bigger films I've ever been in, but, um, uh, and, and I think also doing it in a time when I think all of us in the film industry uh, were worried about when people would get to make movies again, uh, to watch a crew and everyone be excited to be working together again, and um, in Los Angeles, which is sort of the um, epicenter, at least of Hollywood, you know, um, 
to make a movie there was thrilling. And uh, I had a, a great time. I think my, my first intention coming onto this project was to have fun, to bring fun to people watching it and to have fun myself. And I think we've succeeded at that. I definitely did. My biggest reason to make this film was definitely when I read the script, I, I immediately connected with Cam. I felt so much empathy for her, so much admiration. I felt really challenged. I think as an actor, you always want to find a material that feels challenging. I felt very terrified by the material, given the time and place that we're in the world right now, playing an EMT. So that was very, um, yeah, scary and daunting, but also felt an incredible... Uh, a huge calling to make uh, this happen and have this character come to life with me. I've always thought, and especially because this movie is um, occurs in Los Angeles, I see a lot of Latino uh, frontline responders and a lot of, you know, either it's cops, frontline responders, and I felt like it was an incredible opportunity to play a Latin X or a Latina character that was embodied in an, in an incredible light, a woman that was relentless, um, that would do anything for someone else, that she would sacrifice her life. It was just something that really elevated um, my culture, and even though I don't necessarily have to speak Spanish in order to do that, it felt like a great opportunity to honor my Latin ex, you know, people out there that I know they're out there fighting every day for other people's lives. So I'm really honored. And then obviously being able to work with this level of cast and director was very, very um, exciting. I, I, I've been a huge fan of every single person in this project. And so it was a dream come true. It was a learning curve and it was a lot of tough moments throughout the film, but it was really worth it. Yeah, you know, it's really interesting because I learned through Cam's experience and living in her body how, you know, inherently people that dedicate their lives to other people's lives, to save other people's lives, are just inherently ingrained with something different. Um, it's this... Yeah, selfless, just relentless um, mentality. And I feel like the moment that she, we see a glimpse of her just sort of losing her composure when she gets the doors open on her and she's sort of in shock, but then she quickly bounces back because she knows that someone's life is, in, is on the line and it's on her and her only for this person to survive. And I just fell in love with her immediately, the way that she just has some, yeah, some superhero dust to her that I just don't. And I felt like I learned so much through her and I felt really honored because, yeah, it just, it was a very magical role and seeing how she, um, yeah, grows in her arc throughout the film and how she starts in a very dark place where she sort of lost sense of, of reality because of course these people are in fight or flight mode when you're seeing so much sadness every day you sort of disconnect with emotions and we see a cam re-engaging with emotions as we go on in this film and sort of uh, rekindling her passion for what she does and it was just a beautiful beautiful project to be part of. I really prepared for this I had a long period of time between filming and, and getting the job so I felt a lot of a lot of pressure, I, I won't lie, a lot of responsibility. It was, you know, I, I prepped from the end of last year and we filmed all the beginning of this year. And so it was in the peak of the pandemic. And I just really felt a lot of responsibility more than ever. It's the role that I've felt more responsibility in my life. And I just wanted to make sure that nothing that I did felt off or wrong and it felt like the correct thing that they would do. So I put a lot of pressure on myself, which maybe is good or bad. I guess it's for the audiences to to decide, but I prepared. I really did, you know. I. I was working, I was shadowing an EMT. I was um, jumping in an ambulance. At the time, it was really hard to get ambulances, ambulances because it was in the peak of the pandemic, so there was none. And so I had to rent this, um, this van so I could get accustomed to flying in the back, but I have all these technical things to do. I have to put an IV. I have to make sure that all the things that I'm connecting to his body are in the right way. The counting, the CPR, the the way that we use the, the, the 
the things in the ambulance, getting accustomed to the ambulance. So it was a long process, a, a, lo a long prep. And uh, I spoke to surgeons consistently so I could be very clear how I would go through the procedure of the, of the surgery. So it was a, lear it's just a humongous learning um, experience. And now, you know, I can administrate IVs perfectly. I, I feel like I could do it in my sleep. Um, cause I had an arm in my house and I would do it. I would close my eyes and I would do it. And I go through like literally going through the beats and, and I would time myself. I would make sure that I was doing it at the right time. It was just, cause also, you know, the way that we introduce Cam is that she's the best at what she does. So that's already like really hard because already being an EMT is really, really, really hard. Then being the best at it becomes really, um, daunting. But, uh, I hope that people see it and I felt selfishly, I, I remember watching it the first time and I was terrified of not feeling like she was good at what she did. And I remember seeing the first moment that I see her do the things and it was cool. It was like an outer experience of outer body. I could see the character without seeing myself and just really zeroed in. And I felt really proud because I really focused on making everything feel organic and natural to her. I think that what I really uh, found interesting about this script specifically was the character dynamic between them three. It's really what sustains the whole film. Obviously, it's an action film and we are sort of engaged into what will happen. But I think that what becomes really interesting as an audience is when you start seeing the complexity of all these characters sort of finding each other. And I, um, I found I really wanted to go down a route where like Cam is a, a, a character that sort of moves quickly through things because I inherently feel like people who are EMTs and are under a lot of stress consistently become really good at that. So as you see, she's not as shocked as she should, but also EMTs are not trained to what would you do if you become a hostage. So I really wanted to work with the fear of her life, but also someone who is fearless to lose her life because that's what they do for a living and therefore she would be willing to do anything to save someone's life. So that thin line between fear and, and fearless, fear and fearless, and it was scary. And uh, But eventually you start seeing that she recognizes that fear in others. And I think that she sees it in Danny. And there's scenes that even though Danny looks like such a wild card and she, she would definitely be scared of him, I think she sees through him and she sees his fear and she tries to connect with him. And so does she do the same with Will. So the dynamic in between the characters is really interesting and she really cares about Will and therefore we start seeing her really want to help him. Working with Jake was a, was a dream come true. I've always been a humongous Jake Gyllenhaal fan. I, I've watched probably most of his films and I've always found him one of the best of, of our generation. And I was really, you know, I think that for me as an actress, I always wanna work with really good actors because it really challenges me to be better. Um, I always walk in terrified because I think that I do not deserve to be there. <laughs> but it's always, amazing when you're on a set with someone who's throwing so many different things at you and you sort of have to play the game. And I think that to me that was, I was feeling really, um, really excited about that and, uh, and at the same time terrified. But um, it was great. You know, Jake is always coming to set willing to uh, play and do something different and also cares a lot about the director, which is really important and cares about the other actors and and understands that, that it takes two to tango and the better that the other person is, the better the scene is in totality. So, you know, it, it was an, an amazing experience and I love the different dynamics between Danny and Cam and Danny and Will and Will and Cam. And it just was a really, um, fun experience and I am so grateful that Jake was, you know, I, I'm always learning from him, watching him on screen. He's always fearless of playing something new and different. I think Yaya is so absolutely talented. I think that Yaya holds a, um, a cool to him that is inherently in Yaya that brings a lot of um, groundness to Will. Will feels collected and calm even though he's going through 
a really hard time in his life and he's trying to figure out and sort of he's part of a he's a victim of the system and and by the way I think that all the characters what makes this film very interesting is that we come to realize that everyone is just trying to survive and we are all in a shape or form victims of a system that doesn't let us live better and have a better life and so you see three very different characters sort of struggling with a very similar situation but coming at it in completely different ways and I felt like Will's transition and the way that Yaya carries his role is very full of he, there's so much heart to Will there's so much weirdly you're rooting for him the entire time and you feel like he really cares um, and, and he feels deeply. And, and that juxtaposition against Danny is really interesting, creates a very interesting dynamic. It, it's not co trying to compete with each other and you're watching two really good characters and two really good actors go at their craft and their best way possible being directed by one of the best action directors in the world. I mean, he he's really, you say Michael Bay around the world and everyone knows who Michael Bay is, you know? When you are a director on that level that you have such a staple that people recognize your work, that know what you're really good at, it's, it's inherently, you know, it's incredible because I think that Michael is just someone that has hustled and worked his way up and really found a way in the business with talent and showing that he had something to offer that other people didn't have. And I think that he's proven it over and over again that he's the king of action. You know, the way he 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 works with camera, he still is operating camera consistently. Um, the way he lights, the way he shoots, and paired with an incredible script like this one, I think that it was a gift because this was more of less, there's a lot of action obviously in this film as an action film, but there's a lot of uh, character study within the film. And I think that those things paired together is incredible. And I learned a lot about Michael, you know, and Michael is a wild card and you don't really know what you're gonna get every day on set with him. He, he's, um, yeah, he's, he keeps you on your toes as a director and it really forces you to be better, to be prepared, to be ready and, uh, present, very present. You know, we would jump from one scene to the other and he's always playing, you know, he's like a child who'll go out and grab a camera and record the sky or the wall or he's always creating. It's always fun to be around people that feel inspired all all time. It was great. I mean, it was a it was a hard film. It was definitely a a film where we, you know, uh, it was in the middle of a pandemic pre-vaccine. So we had to be incredibly careful and very safe. And it was great because we never had any s scares on set. And But we were, you know, it didn't allow a lot of like socializing the way that usually on a set you do when you're filming. You have all this like downtime that you get to hang out. But we were separated a lot because of COVID regulations. So, but we did. I mean, this movie is just if you don't find levity while filming, it can get really heavy. Um, and especially for my character, she's really going through high stress throughout the whole film. Either she's hyperventilating or someone's dying and she's hyperventilating trying to save someone. It's just a lot of, I, I, I realized that it was more physically tolling that I realized, um, that I thought it was going to be. Um, definitely, so, uh, but Jake has such a f great sense of humor and so does Yaya. So yeah, we would poke fun at each other a lot and at, at Michael, shockingly. I, I, I joke around a lot with Michael. I give him a hard time because I'm tough as nails and, and he likes that too. And so he likes a little bit of spice of this Latina. So I would give him a little bit of a bite and it was fun. I, we got along very well. It was a very emotional film to watch. I've always been curious and I want to see what the audiences feel, but I sobbed a lot. <laughs> I was sobbing. I, you know, this was a really, cathartic film for, for all of us, I think. It was just in very unprecedented times when we were doing it. We were all really scared, but also passionate about our work and really just pushing through and forward to create an optimism. And we were going to set with all, our, you know, after being locked. It was the first film I did after the lockdown and I hadn't been working for a long, long, long time. So I was really passionate. I was coming in, you know, really hot and I really wanted to do the best work. So. I feel like you're always scared as an actor watching a movie because you're always feeling that you're gonna be the loose link that is gonna ruin the film and you're never gonna work again. And uh, I just felt, you know, I, I cried a lot at the end. I didn't know if because it finally felt like a closure to a process that was a lot.
and um, mentally, physically, and uh, everything challenging. So, but I'm hoping that the audiences feel the same way and cry and connect with the characters in a deep way. I think it could have been a little bit personal or the movie itself. I don't know. It'll be for the audiences to say. But I feel very proud of this project and everyone that has been involved in it, from hair to makeup to stunts to our camera crew. Everyone was working so hard in this project, and we are so grateful. So I really hope that audiences go to watch it in the movie theaters because a lot of people were working for you guys to bring entertainment for you and to feel that happiness and thrilling emotion that we felt three years ago and we can reconnect with movie making and movie fantasy. Uh, yeah, w well the script was cool, you know, it had, it had a lot of the things that I was looking for. Um, one is, you know, just the chance to go and work with Michael Bay and, you know, to go work with Jake and the team. Um, but it also, you know, it also showed, you know, a guy who was in a, who had a quite complex dilemma, you know, um, he wanted to, he needed to find the money to, to, to save his wife. Um, and and the only way to do that was to go on this job with his brother. So, you know, it, it was it was a pretty compelling story in terms of the action, in terms of the stakes. Um, and then it was an interesting, uh, you know, an interesting story about about brotherhood, you know, and about um, breaking away from breaking away from family in order to to to, to solidify your own identity. Um, and so that was a lot of what I liked about the script. Um, but then overall, it was really the chance to go in you know, to, to work with Michael, to work with Jake, uh, and, 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 you know, on a project that I thought would be uh, really fast paced and, and, uh, and a lot of fun. Well, um, his brother convinces him to, uh, well, Will, I should say first, Will, is a, Will doesn't have very many options, you know, at the beginning of the film. He, he is dependent on the insurance to, to pay for the surgery for his wife. Um, he has a newborn son. Um, and he needs the money, so Will is uh, very much desperate. You know, he goes to his brother for a loan, and his brother says, look, I can't give you the loan, you know, I'm, I'm all tied up right now, but if you come on this job, you'll never have to worry about money for the rest of your life. And, you know, to, to Will, that sounds, as, that sounds bad. You know, he doesn't, so, he doesn't see that as a good opportunity, but it is the only choice that he has, and he decides to, uh, to make the best of it um, and to, you know, as they say, desperate times calls for desperate situations or drastic times calls for drastic uh, measures. And, you know, going on the bank heist with his brother was definitely a, uh, a drastic measure. The, the relationship between Will and, and Danny, as far as Will is concerned, is, you know, there's definitely brotherhood and love and camaraderie you know, partnership and 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 uh, and humor. You know, b between the two of them, um, but you know, Will Will has has decided that he wants to have a very specific kind of life. You know, he he wants to um, he wants to be a family man. You know, he's recently just just back from the Marines. You know, he has a newborn son, and you know, Danny's mixed up in some things that doesn't really go with uh, that doesn't really go hand in hand with being the family man that that Will um, is attempting to be. Um, but, he, but he's still his brother, and he still finds Danny on the, on the day that he needs them, uh, pardon, on the day that he needs him. Uh, and so, you know, this, the film and the circumstances of the film, you know, they, they pull at that, they pull at that, um, at the connection between the two and at the conflict. You know, I think the, the, they're 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 drawn apart because of the conflict, and and they also are drawn together because of the need, you know, to to get through this to get through through this dilemma. Yeah, it was a lot of fun working with Jake. You know, Jake Jake was interested in the relationship from the beginning, um, and similarly, you know, I was as well. We we really wanted to make sure that these guys were not just adopted brothers who ended up in the same space, but that they experienced each other as real brothers, that they, that they bickered, they fought, uh, that they laughed, uh, that, there were, that there was a big brother, little brother dynamic, that there was history. Um, and it was fun to build that with Jake. He's, he, he's, he's very, uh, very curious, uh, very, very playful. Um, and he's, um, 
he's definitely, you know, game to get in there and, you know, try a lot of different things out. And, you know, we kind of definitely both went in wanting to make sure that the relationship was as real as possible and as strong as possible. And I think we let a, a lot of our own friendship uh, carry on over into, you know, the, the some special moments into the film. Yeah, well, Will, re Will really never does believe that this is going to all go well. You know, I think he has a couple, a few moments in the film where he thinks that it's possible that, that they're going to get away. But he knows that he's on a, Will knows that he's going on a dead-end job uh, as soon as he says yes, but he doesn't have options. Um, and so he has to, has to make the best of it. I think once he gets inside of that ambulance, um, he knows that, that, that they've messed up. Actually, I'll, I'll rewind it. I'll say once, um, once the cop is injured, then he's all in. You know, then he knows that he doesn't have very many options. He can't just drop the bag and run away. Now he has a responsibility, and he's directly connected to, uh, uh, to the crime. You know, he's directly connected to the story, and he can't just wash his hands and say, you know what, my bad. Um, and he's in the center, at the center of the entire film at that point. Asa, she brought, you know, uh, a lot of heart, a lot of curiosity. Um, she, she was very intent on getting it right, on following the procedures the correct way. You know, she, she, she wanted, you know, I think, I think it was her, her goal that a paramedic would see this film and see some of themselves in this film and, and her attention to detail and her attention to the patients, her, uh, her uh, attention to, uh, to specifics, you know. Um, and uh, Will, Will, in terms of their relationship, Will brought, uh, you know, a lot of guilt to the, to, to, to the back of that ambulance, you know. Uh, he brought a lot of optimism also, you know. I think he, he always thought that he could, that he could figure this out, you know. I think, you know, he wanted to, he wanted to save her. He saw the good in her. And he knew that she was just a victim of circumstance in the same way that he would probably consider himself a victim of circumstance. And, uh, and you know, whether that was, that's a naive thought or not, I think it's, it's the way that, it's the way that Will had to, had to view the situation. Um, and, and, and I think they both bonded over, over that, that aspect of their reality is that they would both honestly, truly, uh, prefer to be somewhere else, um, and, and that they didn't, uh, deserve to be in that situation. I actually did, uh, drive an ambulance. I, I, uh, they, they set me up in a, in a big lot, put me in an ambulance and put up some cones and I did cone drills and, uh, and I, I did like, the uh, just about drifting in the, just about drifting in the ambulance and you know driving really fast and coming to sudden stops and uh it was it was exciting and I did it I think that was my first day on the job um they just put me in the ambulance and said go don't be afraid it's not going to tip uh it's not going to tip even if you try to make a tip um and then I was off and I was driving at high speed in an ambulance and it felt it felt natural you know I felt like you know, I had driven a U-Haul once or twice before. You know, not at that speed, uh, but 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 that was the closest thing that I could associate with. Uh, you know, that feeling of getting behind an ambulance. Uh, but then you got all the buttons, and then you got the, you know, you got the, uh, you know, the sirens, and then the stakes, and the adrenaline, and the cameras, and things like that. It was uh, definitely one of the you know more exciting pieces stunt pieces of uh, stunt work that I've done. Uh, not enough, you know. Whatever I can say, it's not enough. Not like Mike is. A uh, pleasure to work with. Um, he loves, loves, loves filmmaking, um, and he's just exciting. You know, I think he brings, he brings an an, an energy to the set, and it's almost as if it's his his first time making a movie, uh, and and like he, but 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 he's an expert at the same at the same time. You know, uh, he brings a freshness to it. You know, I think he, you know, he's a cat who really loves his job and you can tell it in the work. Uh, he's very, very passionate. He's funny, you know, and uh, you know, he obviously he's known for, you know, the big set pieces and things like that also, but but he has a very uh, astute attention to detail. You know, we see that in some of the smaller intimate moments uh, as well as the larger moments, uh, you know, also. Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. You know, I think this 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 is a movie, you know, it's, it's, it's action packed. It's a suspenseful uh, drama. I think it's a thriller. Uh, it's, a, it's a heist movie, but it's also a heart movie. It's also a family, a movie about family and about values and about what, what will you do when your back is against the wall. It's a movie about, about honor. 
It's a movie about right and wrong. Um, and it, I think it's a movie about, about, about heroes and about heroes in difficult circumstances. Uh, so there's a lot of everything, you know, for everyone uh, in this film. It's, uh, it's fun, it's funny, uh, it, it'll make you laugh and, and uh, it might make you cry, uh, but I think you'll definitely have a good time no matter what.